Hello everyone, this video is sponsored by Brilliant and in this video we're going to be solving a differential equation. So we have y double prime plus y prime equals y. So we have an interesting differential equation that is equal to itself, a function that is equal to itself when differentiated twice and once and when you add those together you're supposed to get the original function. Now let's go ahead and see how we can solve this type of problem. So since we have the function and its derivatives, think about an easier case. For example, what would you do if you had y prime equals y? You would immediately think of e to the power x, right? Because the derivative of e to the x is itself. Is that the only function whose derivative is equal to itself? Something to think about. But anyways, so let's go ahead and use that idea and replace y with something like e to the power rx, where r is a real number to be determined. So if we make this assumption and go ahead and differentiate it, we get the following. y prime from here is going to be, because the derivative of e to the rx is going to be e to the rx multiplied by the derivative of the inside by the chain rule, you're going to get r times r e to the power rx. And if you differentiate this one more time, notice that the constant in the front is just going to stay the same. So you're going to be differentiating e to the rx and then just multiply by r, which is going to give you the second derivative as r squared e to the power rx. In other words, every time you differentiate this, you're going to be multiplying it by r, which kind of gives you another differential equation, right? But anyways, let's not get distracted and go ahead and substitute this into our original equation. So y double prime is r squared e to the rx plus y prime is r e to the rx and the whole thing, the sum, is equal to y which is e to the power rx. Interesting. We got an equation. Now let's go ahead and simplify this. Notice that on the left hand side I can go ahead and factor out e to the rx and that gives me r squared plus r. And on the right hand side, I just have e to the rx, but I can also write it as e to the rx times 1, because 1 times any number is the same number, right? Any exceptions? Not really. Now, let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. First of all, I can go ahead and cancel out e to the rx, which means division by e to the rx, but can it be 0? No. e to the rx cannot be 0, even for complex values of x. Now, this gives us a really nice equation and it has a really nice, beautiful flavor to it. So from here we get r squared plus r equals 1. Nice. This is quadratic and we can easily solve it, right? But first of all, let's write everything on the left-hand side or bring everything to the left. This gives us a full quadratic, which we can solve by using the quadratic formula. That's very helpful, right? So from here, r is just going to be negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4ac, which is 1 plus 4, and that gives you the square root of 5. Do you remember what this looks like? If you do, please write it down in the comment section. But this gives us two solutions. So let's go ahead and distinguish between them because we want to separate them. So we can call the first one r1 or r sub 1, and I can write the plus sign first because I like to be positive, more positive. And then the second one is r2, which is obviously a negative value, right? So there are two r values. Notice that e to the power rx was a solution. Therefore, e to the r1x and e to the r2x are both solutions. But guess what? If they are solutions, their linear combination is also a solution. And that's actually the general solution. So if c1 and c2 are real constants, then we can go ahead and write this solution as y equals c1 times e to the power r1x plus c2 times e to the power r2x, where c1 and c2 are just real numbers, right? Well, if you just plug it in, obviously your equation is going to look much, much nicer. So let's go ahead and plug in the real values. So we're going to get y equals c1 multiply, and you can definitely use a multiplication symbol here, which is going to make things a little more clear. I don't know, some people like it that way, but this is going to be c1 times e to the power negative 1 plus root 5 over 2. Remember, this was our first r value multiplied by x 
plus C2, which is our second constant, multiplied by e to the power negative 1 minus root 5 all over 2 multiplied by x again. And again, this is just a general solution. So if C1 and C2 are both 0, then y equals 0 is obviously a trivial solution, right? And you can definitely make up so many solutions. There are infinitely many solutions basically determined by these constants. So do you think C y equals 1 is a solution. Well, if you replace x with 0, but guess what? You're not allowed to replace x with anything. You can only play around with c1 and c2. Those are the only free constants. You don't get anything else for free, okay? But you can definitely substitute a couple different things. Like, for example, you can just replace c2 with 0, and that's just going to give you c1. And you can say, hey, I want to set c1 to 1 for simplicity's sake, then you'll be getting something like this, which is definitely a solution to this differential equation. And do you want to make sure that is a solution? Go ahead and plug it in, and you'll see that it satisfies, hopefully, the equation, right? Great. Well, this brings us to today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is an amazing platform where you learn by doing and by interacting with the content. There are thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. Among many of the courses they offer, I particularly like how LLMs, which is large language models, work. In this course, you'll be working with real language models and get the hands-on experience. You'll be able to compare models that are trained on different kinds of data, such as Taylor Swift lyrics and cookbooks. You'll also be able to tune a large language model to produce different kinds of output. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash cybermath or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription, so don't forget to check it out. Now, this normally brings us to the end of this video, but before we finish, I want to show you something. You ready? Okay, here we go. These are some results from Wolfram Alpha, which verifies our solution, right? This is the solution from Wolfram Alpha and a sample solution family. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thanks for watching and thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. And please comment, like, and subscribe. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time. Until then, bye-bye.